Welcome back to Crosstalk. I'm Peter LaBelle. To remind you, we're talking about Iran and its nuclear program. Okay, Patrick, I want to go back to you because you were, uh, had the last point to make uh, in the first half of the program. One of the things I think is very interesting here is, and I'll be a little bit provocative and I want to see how you guys react to it, but it, it's really, looking at the report, it's not really an analysis of nuclear, uh, Iran's nuclear program. It's a case to go to war against it. Well, I, I do think that the IAEA and, as I said, kind of uh, other kind of weapons inspectors' bodies are playing an increasingly important role in effectively paving the way towards potential war. I think that was very evident with the Iraq War, with the formulation of the dodgy dossier. I know that the IAEA weren't directly involved with that, but the director, the former Director General Hans Blix, certainly was, who kind of uh, did a lot of the inspections uh, in Iraq and, and headed that up. But I, I guess more fundamentally, I just wanted to make this point. That I do think, you know. The fact that the U.S. were given kind of privileged access for anyone else to this report, the the, the fact that uh, actually the IAEA is nominally independent but does ultimately just answer to the uh, the UN and also to kind of Obama, the the fact that actually uh, this is being considered in the first place as a legitimate thing that an international body can start to effectively poke its nose in other countries' business, uh, in, in, the, recommend the imposition of sanctions, and effectively start to talk as Mark started to do on behalf of the Iranian people and saying this isn't in their interests, well actually they should be able to determine all right, let's, what's in let's their talk about in who's in, what? All right, Let's talk about who's in, who's in, in whose interest this is all about. Right before the report came out, Mark, I want to talk to you in Washington, uh, we had the um, a scandal coming out of the Israeli cabinet about Netanyahu trying to get members of his uh, coalition government on board for an attack on Iran, and then the report comes out. I mean, maybe that's psych ops or something like that, but it, it, this, it certainly can't be a coincidence, and Israel has been itching for the U.S. to, to bomb to, to destroy the nuclear program that is there in Iran for a, lo a long time now. I mean, is this coming to an head? Well, first of all, it's silly to presume the IAEA is a tool of anyone. As I noted, in the Iraq war, the IAEA made very clear against the United States government, then controlled by President Bush, that Iraq did not have uh, nuclear or any weapons of mass destruction. Bush went to war anyway. So the IAEA is not a tool of the United States. Look, a war is coming unless Iran's nuclear uh, weapons program is stopped. It's that simple. It may be from Israel. It may be from the United States. Yeah, it may be from Saudi yeah, Arabia. Mark, it may Mark, be from the UAE. Just, but you're, it may just be you're the assuming, race. That's you're assuming that, it, that they do have is program. to do sanctions now. Okay, who's so on this? Let's go to, like let's the, go to I, Rutgers I, University. Go ahead. The IIEA, the IIEA that went against Mr. Bush in Iraq was headed by Mr. al Baradei, And that very Mr. al Baradei, in an interview in Times Magazine flatly said that Iran has never had, as far as he is concerned, a nuclear program the design toward militarization. If, so the same IIEA that went against Mr. Bush, the same IIEA now uh, has said that Iran doesn't have that uh, militarization program. This is a completely no, different No, it's not the same IIEA, IIEA, IIEA as you know, because, uh, by a completely like different just, person. Patrick, go ahead. IIEA Patrick, IIEA gave a report. Let so Patrick I jump in. This, this, Gentlemen, let's go to Patrick in London. The, what we're seeing is kind of scaremongering here. Basically, war is imminent unless uh, Iran stops building nuclear weapons. No, it's not. Uh, ultimately, it needs to be for the U.S. and Israel to decide whether or not they decide to declare, declare war on Iran. Uh, just the fact that it does build nuclear weapons doesn't necessarily mean they're going to use them. Okay. And who is it really for uh, the US, Israel, the West to decide who or who doesn't develop nuclear weapons right. in many ways? I mean, why shouldn't it be for what those sovereign countries to make those decisions? I, I just wanted to make this point because I think what, what we're what? seeing here really is a modern form of colonialism from these countries. They're using weapons inspections agencies, the UN, etc., to keep down these countries that they see to be disobedient, unruly, not trustworthy of possessing these kind of weapons. I think that's really problematic. Patrick, it speaks if you to want this kind of old form of colonial mentality. Race. It's got nothing to do with colonialism. Saudi Arabia, the United just, Arab no, Emirates, no, <laughs> Egypt, Turkey. You're going to have all these countries right, develop right, nuclear right, weapons. You're going to have a nuclear arms Gentlemen, let me, let let me jump in here. You gentlemen, the, the only people please let me jump in here. Is America. Gentlemen, let me jump in here. Mark, if I can go to you, I'd like to read a very short, what, one sentence from the report. To date, Iran has not provided the agency access to the heavy water stored at the uranium conversion facility in order to take samples. Now, that's an accusation here. But if you check 
but heavy water production is not covered by Iran's safeguards agreement. I mean, it's saying it's, uh, the, uh, Iran is doing things that it shouldn't be doing, but it's not uh, true. I mean, the fact of the matter is there are certain things that don't fall under agreements that Iran has signed, but they're still accused of not being cooperative. I mean, it's a blatant mistake Iran. in the report. Iran has signed the nuclear non-proliferation treaty. Yeah. Non and it's treaty. also signed, it's also signed a safeguards weapons. agreement, an additional, the most scrutinized <laughs> nuclear and program in history. And Iran, well, except that Iran uh, is not allowing Biden. the IAEA to scrutinize that program. Look, if Iran had a peaceful program, originally they said they were going to take their lower enriched uranium, ship it to Russia for processing, that it could only be used for peaceful purposes. Whatever happened to that idea? Well, Iran recognized that they've actually shipped it off. They couldn't develop their nuclear warheads. The IAEA has made very clear in a very, very detailed, and if you haven't read those appendixes in the 14 pages as they show the design of the Iranian warhead and how the nuclear uh, bomb could be put in that warhead. I mean, I think you're living in a dream world. And the thing is, is that the other countries in the and region, I, it's not just Israel, and Saudi Arabia, and the UAE, and no. Egypt, and Turkey, and soon you will have a massive nuclear arms race in the Middle East with a lot of terrorist okay, groups. Okay, well, there's only one country. And I have to go to Husham. I have to go to Husham because there's one country in the region that does have nuclear yeah. weapons, and it's Israel. Go ahead. Husham, in Rutgers University. Go ahead. Okay, first, first, first Iran has... Uh, uh, responded in detail about those quote-unquote studies that uh, dealt with the building a nuclear device or weapons uh, of uh, you know the, the military stuff uh, that has been already IIA I, I, I already has those informations uh, very clear. Why does Iran need nuclear weapons? If IIA US that's a good they, question. No, no. I'm, I, I, that's, well, I mean, who's threatening to attack Iran? The you only time Iran would get attacked you cannot is if tell it develops nuclear weapons. Do any Why studies? don't they just give them up? My friend. My friend, you don't, you cannot tell a country not to do any studies for any reason. I mean, that's, uh, the fact you that can they tell a country not to develop nuclear, nuclear design, weapons. It doesn't Absolutely. mean they're building it. No, no. Okay. I mean, so then, then it's stop. Of course, then they're building it. Why do they need it? They have all, all the energy. All right, they gentlemen, need. gentlemen, Mark, gentlemen. That's Mark. a very good question. Hang I on here. Professor. Hang on, everybody. Mark, Patrick. I am a professor. Patrick. Let me yeah. go to Patrick in London. Okay. Look. I mean, there are thousands of troops on both sides, American troops on both sides of Iran. There is a very strong American fleet to the south, okay? And it's being threatened constantly with attack and maybe even evasion. So, I mean, if I were part of the political elite in Tehran, I would probably want a nuclear weapon because, you know, they, they, if you don't, then you fall down the path of what, Iraq, Libya? I mean, no wonder North Korea has gone down that path. I mean, I'm just saying yeah, no, that countries yeah. act mm -hmm. rationally in their own national interests. Yeah, I think they do. And I think um, in, in many ways it wouldn't necessarily be in Iran's interest to, to develop a nuclear mm -hmm. bomb because, I mean, as, as they point out at the time, if they had one or two, then obviously they could be completely obliterated sure. by Israel and the US, etc. Right. I think what we're seeing here to an extent is an erosion of uh, kind of moral authority from the West in many ways. They now feel they need the uh, IAEA or other inspectors to go into these countries and effectively build up this evidence base that allows them to intervene in one way or another. Why can't they? Uh, it just speaks to America America's lack of confidence, I think, in many ways, that it no longer feels it has the moral authority to I intervene. May. But yeah. even so, I think that moral authority is very problematic. What we're doing here is when we're saying, oh, there might be an arms race, or oh, the UAE may want to develop <laughs> nuclear weapons, other countries in that region might do, it's basically saying the only people who are civilised enough to possess nuclear weapons, or this kind of power, are, 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 are the kind of superiors in the West. I think that's a very patronising In the country, and and one one country in, the, in the world has actually used them, and one has actually used them, the United States has used them. Those weapons. Okay. Exactly. Go ahead. The the mistake, that, yeah, see, so, so, so. Mark, go ahead. Can Mark, I, go ahead in Washington. I think the mistake that Patrick and Hushan is make, are making is they're conflating the Iranian government with the country of Iran. And they say Iran, Iran, Iran is if the government represented the people of Iran. They do not. The people are very much trying to overthrow their dictatorship. The Persian people happen to be some of the most pro Western, pro Israel, pro democracy, pro women's rights people in the Middle East. But they are being put down by their own government. And I feel that their right, own so government may well use government. nuclear weapons to put yeah. their own people down. Democracies no. having nuclear weapons is one thing. When a dictatorship has them, it leads to a far more dangerous world. Hushan, go ahead. That's just... That's All right. Just Mark, just first... All right, Hushan, first, go ahead. Please, please understand, there is, there is no Persian people, there are Iranian people. Persian also is a small... One Same group people. Of the ethnic uh, community there. So that's Iranian, not Persian. That's number one. Second, Same in people. fact, those Iranian people are also... I'm sorry? 
Those Iranian people are the same people, the Iranian people, the Persian people. Sanctions. That they are suffering from American sanctions, from Israeli war threats. They are suffering from the regime. Yes, you are absolutely right. The point here is this. I believe if the United States wanted Iran to build nuclear weapon, it is trying to do its best to do it. I mean, what the U.S. is doing, what Israelis are doing, are really pushing the Islamic Republic toward weaponization. I think there is a plot out there it's exactly to the move opposite. the Islamic Republic it in that direction. Let me explain to you. Let me explain. That Mr. Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia, has put a plan on the table. The plan says, let's work a deal between the 5 plus 1 and Iran on an incremental basis under which Iran will suspend its, its uh, illicit activities and the U.S. will lift sanctions. Now, in part of that plan, Iran has accepted accepted to ratify the additional protocol. It has accepted but, but who to shall, go along Why won't Iran give its three, nuclear materials to Russia for processing one. the way they promised they would? It will, it will be part of that. They have accepted to send that spent they fuel done to it. Russia. They have accepted any... Hold on. All right, gentlemen, gentlemen, we're fastly... Gentlemen, too. gentlemen, we're fastly running out of time here. Patrick, I want to give you the last word in the program. Yeah, is this, is that, how is this all going to end? To is, this, is this just I, I, a drumbeat I, I, to war? Go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm quite gobsmacked by Mark's kind of assumption that he can speak on behalf of the Iranian people, uh, you know, better than they can. You know, he seems to be some them. kind of guardian, guardian of the Iranian people who can't be seen to uh, actually take their own initiative and actually overthrow the governments themselves. I think any intervention that the West I'd makes like into Iran is going to, is going to put uh, any kind of potential uprising or Arab Spring in Iran on hold. All if right, anything, gentlemen, gentlemen, we've run out of time. We'll see where this goes. Many thanks to my guest today in London. Washington and at Rutgers University, New Jersey. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time.